Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, it's a beautiful day outside and we're gonna go for a ride, but we're inside the showroom at Electricity Bikes in Washington, DC. That's the owner, Charlie, over there. And uh, I just wanted to start here because we have a lot of different models to kind of compare and contrast against the Super Marche. This is a new one from Yuba, and I was looking up that word Marche, and in French it means market, so it's kind of like the supermarket. It is. <laughs> which is really cute. I like the name on that. Uh, the older, like, long tail classic cargo bike that uh, Yuba had was the Spicy Curry, and this one also uses the Bosch mid-drive motor. So, you know, there are some similarities, but it doesn't have that really big front box. It has a larger wheel up front and a smaller one in the rear to lower the cargo area, this nice little surround with the padded seat. This one still has a nice, you know, it's not quite as long, but this is a pretty sturdy rear rack and it's capable of handling a lot more than a traditional like bolt-on rack that we might see on some of these other bikes over here. So it's it's very cargo ready and you can see there's even like a yep window right there and that's designed to fit the easy fit. So here's a maxi and see it's got that little kind of plug thing right there with the twist. You just set, a, set this down from the top, it plugs in and then you twist the dial the thing about that that's worth noting is, you see how there are all these different bolt options here on the top? Well, they also have them on the side. And if you don't remove those bolts first, then the seat can't really slide down. It'll kind of get scraped and hung up on those bolts. So we were testing all this before we jumped in. And um, it's just neat that they do have a window there, enough room for one child seat. Alternatively, you can get the new Yep Maxi next. And this one actually clamps on from the sides. So see, there's those two like sidearm things. And that works pretty well. It sort of clamps on from the sides. A lot of um, bikes or electric bikes with aftermarket racks, they might not have that yep window. And so it's neat that this is compatible with both and there's all kinds of different options for adding cargo. I'm not exactly sure what would be ideal for side mounting here. This doesn't seem as low as these like running board options that we have over here on the Spicy Curry. But you know, it, it's, a, it's just a different bike. So I like that you've got that rear, all kinds of possibilities there. And then that huge box up front, it does not come with the bamboo box or this like sort of deck piece or the child seat padding with the seat belts. You have to pay a little bit extra for that. So this bike is $59.99, about $6,000. And it comes with a lot of great hardware right out of the gates, including the Enviolo N380. I believe this one is cargo rated, so it's it's designed to be a little bit sturdier and stand up to that Bosch Performance Line CX. That is a high torque, 75 Newton meter mid-drive motor. And I was looking at the drivetrain and I was like, okay, what do we got going on here? This is a Herman's plastic chain cover. So, you know, if you've got a dress or pants or something, they're not gonna get quite as dirty or snagged on this thing. This is a fairly low step frame. So a lot of times I'm like, is it mid step? Is it low step? I, I actually think this one is, is lower and the seat can come pretty low as well. So if you're someone with a limited kind of height, um, you're petite, you've got a lower inseam, or maybe you just wanna be able to put your feet down and stabilize this bike, you're gonna be able to do that a little bit easier, but they've got an extra reinforcement tubing here, a lot of gussets, see those extra plates right down there? So it's, it's a fairly sturdy bike more gussets right there. They're really trying to make this thing tough. Um, and then drivetrain is really clean. So this is not a derailleur. That's like a little spring-loaded um, chain tensioner. So you're not gonna get chain slap. And then all the gears and everything, they're inside that continuously variable transmission, which can be shifted at standstill. We've got that nice little infographic where you know the guy, it's kind of flat. If you wanna go faster and it's easy riding, if you're gonna climb, then you, you kind of dial it up and he's climbing a hill. So 380 degrees of, of shifting range on that. And then just amazing brakes here. These are the Magura MT5s with quad piston calipers. That's pretty impressive, 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear. And when you think about that, that's a pretty large size. Some of the electric mountain bikes we've looked at have 200, 203 millimeter rotors, um, but they have much, much larger wheels. So you get a huge mechanical advantage over these 20 inch wheels on this bike. So remember we were looking 
looking at the spicy curry over there, it has a larger front wheel, lower attack angle, a little bit smoother. It might span gaps easier than this. This might not be quite as comfortable because it's smaller, but when you have such a long wheelbase, that helps to give you some comfort. And then a steel fork, so it's very sturdy, but also a little bit vibration dampening. Great stopping power with the quad piston calipers, the larger rotor, even these rims, they've got reinforcement eyelets and then the Schwabi Balloon Big Apple Plus tires with reflective sidewalls. It's a white frame, so that's gonna stand out a little bit. And then these nice lights with the kind of blue line is what they're called. They have windows on the side. So this is gonna point where you steer and it's gonna keep you visible from more angles. Okay, so I'm going over a lot of the different features of this bike, but I wanna come back to weight. The website says without that front cargo box, it's about 78 pounds. We weighed it, believe it or not, we actually took off some of the accessories, the child seats and stuff, and we weighed it just a minute ago, it was about 104 pounds. So that's over 25 pounds difference with that front cargo box bamboo, which I believe, you know, so just keep that in mind. And then price, we said $6,000 just sort of naked, and they've just got this aluminum alloy open space, you could make your own cargo bucket, I guess. But then if you wanna add this, you first need that deck piece, which is like $70. And then it's like $150 for the surround. And so we're getting up there to like 320. It starts to get, you know, a little bit more expensive. And then I think this is a couple hundred bucks here. It's, does that sound right, Charlie? Sounds about right. Yeah, I mean, this is a really neat piece. This is kind of the, the show piece for me actually, because it makes that an all weather, uh, you know, child scooter, but plus cargos and groceries can go in there. That's right. Pretty easily. So that's the star of the show. That's what makes this unique compared to, especially the spicy curry. We do have some other bucket style cargo bikes, like from Reese and Mule over here. This one's a little bit shorter. This one's longer. It's got a, a really like sturdy and very tight cover on it, which is nice. Might be a little bit more expensive. There's a lot of bikes to choose from these days, but it's neat to see Yuba entering the space and maybe a little bit more value price point by comparison, right? A little bit, a little bit better on the, uh, easier on the checkbook for sure. Absolutely. And you know, we were looking at this cover here and it's pretty neat. Can you just kind of lift it up for a second? See, there's these, these rods that stick into the sides and then you actually kind of line those up with the arms here, like this little piece here. It's got a quick release right there. And so that would slide over this and we took the other bars out to weigh it, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So it would set over and you can look down and even open this and you could talk to your kids, I guess, and kind of see down there and see what's going on. That's one of the advantages of having kids up front versus in the rears. You can keep an eye on them and interact with them. And we've got that like, almost like a skylight going on, side windows, the front window. But we, we did have this on, we did have it tight before. And it just, you know, there was a, there's a little bit more flapping going on. It wasn't quite as tight and seamless as some of the other covers. But, you know, again, that's the compromise. You're already spending a ton of money. This is a pretty premium drive system. And we've even got the Bosch 500. That's the power pack down here. This is a high capacity battery pack that's gonna get you a little bit farther, especially when paired with a mid drive and then an efficient, you know, continuously variable transmission in the rear. So it's all about shifting thoughtfully and empowering that motor so you can get the most out of that battery pack. There is a range estimate that I'm gonna go through in a minute with the display, but I wanna call out that, you know, some of these bikes are now offering dual battery setup. So you can see that right here, we've got two power pack 500s right here. Same thing here. The Yuba isn't set up to do that, at least not right now that I can see that we don't have a second slot to mount a second battery. You could always just buy a power pack 500 and toss it into maybe a trunk bag or up in your cargo bay, but you'd have to physically remove it and then you'd be cycling one battery completely and then on to the next, whereas these balance them both against each other and, and really nice drains them fairly evenly, which helps to extend the battery. Go ahead and take the cover off here real quick, Charlie. Okay, so coming back to the battery, we do have this charger. This is a four amp charger. Bosch does a really good job. It's fairly compact, 1.7 pounds. So your other alternative is just to toss that in there. Again, almost two pounds on that versus 5.7 pounds on a separate power pack. And I feel like those are 900 bucks or something, right? Yeah, that's about right. So nine, nine, nine to a thousand, I think after shipping, Basically $1,000 is what most dealers sell. Starts to add up. But if you think about you know, your situation, if you have room to park this, you could replace your car. You know, and if you don't have room to park it inside, it's pretty easy to remove that battery pack. And then the Intuvia display is also removable so that your, your bike isn't gonna get 
it's not quite as exposed, right? These are some of the fancier parts on the bike that could be a little bit more sensitive. I just love that in addition to the motor, the headlight and this taillight both run off of that main battery pack and they're pretty bright. Let me just power it up real quick here for a second comes to life quickly. This display does have a little micro USB port on the side, which is nice to charge an accessory. I think it only five volts, 500 milliamps versus a thousand on the new Bosch Kiox, which means you can't necessarily charge some iOS devices. They're a little bit more power hungry. I guess I need to press the light button here. Lights on is what it says. Okay, there we go. So look at this, looks like a couple LEDs. It's a nicer light and it's positioned really well out of the way if you did have the child seat. Can you toss one of those child seats on sure. while, while I'm messing with this? I want to show that that side window again because to me that's pretty unique with the headlight that really separates it and then another star of the show here is this cable actuated steering so we actually have two cables on each side and see that's how it turns and steers it's it's very precise in my experience and i don't know if it's supposed to be lighter weight or what but a lot of these other bikes see how we have like a big metal arm that goes all the way back and it might like be a little bit lower, might not get quite as much ground clearance as this one. It's a, it's a very special and unique setup for steering. And again, for me, it's about precision. And then look at how high this, this stem has a bunch of spacers in it, adjustable angle, negative 40 to positive 40, a little bit swept back, ergonomic grips. You know, there we go. So you can kind of see this. If we had that cover on, I think it's, it's tall enough, depending on your height that you can see over it while you're riding along. Great job, Charlie. This thing looks great. I mean, it's matching and white in this case. He's twisted that lever. He's gone with the kind of easy fit window, which makes sense. And then we've got the, the light and some reflectors built onto the back of the child seat itself. And of course, fenders, aluminum alloy fenders on this bike, extra sturdy. They can get bent compared to plastic, but they're not gonna rattle around quite as much, right? This is a plastic fender, it's, it's more flexible might rattle a little bit more versus aluminum alloy. It's a pretty special bike, you know, that's how I feel. What do you think about this thing? Who buys this? I mean, it's, it's unique in that it's got a lower step than almost any other front loader bike. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, the Bullet was one of the first ones and the, the bar was way up here. Yeah. And these are family bikes and people wanna be able to get in and out really quickly. And this is lower than the load, this is lower than the Paxter. So that's a very unique feature. Yeah, uh, and bottle cage bosses, don't forget about that. I mean, yep. being able to reach your drink, because it's like, where else do you put it? Re Reese and Mueller's done some interesting things letting you mount stuff to the back of their box, but this doesn't really come with that box, and you have to reach further and down more. So having having bottle cage bosses in such a big standover, and the kickstand, Charlie, like this is a, it's a very wide kickstand. It's got it those is. rubber feet and the bike is very well balanced. We actually weighed the bike on the handlebar right here and it only tipped forward a bit. So the bike is fairly, it's fairly even with the box right in the center, which means the weight distribution is good. The battery, the motor, they're all very low. And then the motor casing here, um, you know, Bosch Performance Line CX, like we talked about, it's pretty narrow and it's it's almost like naked. You just see the alloy shell in the, and actually while well, while we're getting, while we're down here, check it out, 80 pounds rear cargo weight. 250 pounds front and then I think they said 300 pounds total so you can kind of mix and match that weight but this is what I was trying to show you see how slim that casing is it's just very minimal and they've done a great job integrating that and awesome pedals too a lot of times you get these like cheaper plastic pedals in this case we've got aluminum alloy very large platform VP with set pins this is the kind of pedal that if you slip off you know you can get some little scratches like I get from riding a lot on mountain bikes but you're not gonna slip off as easily. So coming back to an all weather bike, we're in Washington DC, man, it was raining the other day. It, it really can start pouring on a moment's notice and then it's, even though this is the school bus, you know, you're <laughs> gonna get not quite as big a party in there if, uh, if everybody's wet. That's true, P kids are gonna get a little bit fussy, I suppose. I love the ergonomic grips. I love that they went with hydraulic brakes just because of that stopping power we talked about. It's, it's a little bit easier to pull these than if there was a cable going all the way out to the front and all the way back here. Hydraulic is just very consistent and there's adjustable reach on these so you can bring them in a little bit. If you have smaller hands, you don't have to reach as far. Maybe you're wearing gloves. I know a lot of people like to wear gloves when it's, when it's cold out. Got the friendly bell to signal people. I wanna go into the display and, and maybe do a few more um, comments while we're out there, but it's just been so cool looking at this in your showroom because there are so many cool bikes to choose from now 
And, uh, you know, I just feel like Ubus really coming on strong with something unique. And again, trying to hit that affordable price point a little bit more. This is cheaper than some of the other ones, isn't it? I mean, for the load, uh, which is very popular this year in the load 75, you know, you're getting almost up to 11 grand with the cover and all the seats and the shelves wow. and everything else. So with the dual battery, but you know, this is, you're able to carry three kids really pretty comfortably in there. This one has, it looks like the setting for a second seat. So I guess it's possible, but the cover doesn't look like it's designed to pop out. See how that one's designed to yeah, pop out. It kind of comes so, forward yeah. a little bit, doesn't it? So yes, you could have one passenger that could, I guess they could all pile up in the front if it did start raining in the back. Yeah. Uh, but that part is pretty cool about this too, that you can add that second uh, second seat capability. That's that's a bit unique for the, for the uh, category. Will you hold on to this camera sure. for a second, Charlie? I just wanted to get on the bike and, you know, one of the things that I, so to, to move the bike forward, you just like push it, right? And then the kickstand stows. And because of where the steering is and stuff, it, I haven't felt a lot of frame flex. Like it, it just, it's not the same. Like some of these other bikes, for whatever reason, like the frame can flex but this one has some weight out front and some weight in the back and you're right in the middle and that makes it comfortable and it also seems to make the frame pretty rigid like when i've been riding it and stuff it's just yeah it doesn't feel as precarious it feels kind of sporty for a cargo bike to be honest with you um, so with that said we might go outside and actually do a do some test rides and get some photos and have some fun. But there you go. Again, electricity bikes in Washington, DC. Thank you for, for, you know, we spent some time setting this up and I appreciate your team's done a really good job. Thank you, Court. Thanks. You know, we're just putting this cover back on the bike and you know, it feels like there's room for improvement here just to see how like loose that is right there. Um, it's a little bit flappier than some of the other covers and there just isn't it isn't like a tie down or like a velcro or something so you know this is just me like after the initial review see right there a little flappy they've got these clamps and then those posts that we installed again but the rear one you can see here that, that it's pretty close see how it's actually scratching the back of the bamboo it's and you we couldn't slide that off we had to take it off just not as easy to adjust this thing as some of the other covers that go on and come off super quickly um it's stable feels sturdy we got the window but you know you might end up leaving that on more frequently because of the extra steps and because of how tight some of that is um so that's for me that's like room for improvement a little bit on this cover i feel i still think it's very functional but um yeah worth calling out okay guys we've been cruising around the neighborhoods having some fun out here this bike really feels good like it's not really loaded, right? I've been cruising around. Charlie's over there on just a, you know, regular bike. He's got the specialized Como. Um, we might do some double, you know, so we might double up and test this thing out, the cargo bay. Uh, I just wanted to get another close up on, you know, this yep seat, cause it just goes in so easily. See how it kind of locks into that, that front bar and then you push down on it like this. And then you want to make sure that you're not getting hung up on like that little, uh, the little threaded eyelet, the boss. And then you start to twist and it sort of locks, right? Unless you press this red thing. So it's not gonna come off very easily. You can see how that extends and it locks it into that window. I mean, it's just, it works so well. I really like these seats and I don't usually go quite as close or as thorough. And I think you can put this around and then thread it through like this. And that's gonna make sure that you don't have, you know, just as a, a double measure. It's really cool. You can put it around the seat post. This seat post is 30.9 millimeters. So it's a little bit wider, you know, seat posts do go down to like 27.2. So 30.9, a little bit sturdier tubing here, talking about the frame flex and stuff. It's 400 millimeters long. This frame only comes in one size, but with a seat post that's that long, you can really raise it up pretty high and get better leg extension or bring it down and make this feel really approachable and stable. So you can put your feet down at stop signs and traffic lights and stuff. Cause again, it's, it can become a, a pretty heavy bike. The saddle is very comfortable for me. I don't know, it just fits my body really well. I like it, I don't think I would swap that out. And then these locking ergonomic grips and the slight sweep on the handlebar and then all those spacers and just, you know, we talked about the adjustable stem. It becomes a pretty comfortable bike. You know, it's, I'd call this upright, but it's, it's giving you that like visibility. You know, you can spot traffic, you can talk with your friends, see over that cover if you end up getting that 
to keep your kids dry. It's a really nice, it's a really nice setup. The fork being steel, it dampens the vibration, but you don't have a suspension on this. There's, it's just, it's just rigid. Um, the tires, I was looking at the tire pressure earlier and you know, it's got a pretty good range, 30 to 55. So you can lower those a little bit to create some comfort, just dampen the vibration because the smaller tires, they do have a higher attack angle. They fall into bumps and stuff a little bit more than spanning over them, but they've actually felt pretty comfortable for me. The reason I'm focusing in on all this comfort stuff is because, you know, you tend to ride a little bit further with an electric bike, uh, more frequently, at least I do. And comfort becomes a big focus for me. And when, when you can't really swap out the suspension or the, the fork with the suspension post as easily or whatever, you might go back to the air pressure. Just don't go too low on this because you could get a pinch flat. Like if you run into the edge of a curb or something, it pushes down on the tire and then it can pinch the inner tube inside and create a flat scenario. So the other thing you can do for comfort, aside from adjusting that stem and everything is, is to get a suspension seat post. And they do sell 30.9 millimeters, I believe in the Connect suspension seat post or the SR Suntour NCX. And then it really gives you that float feeling. It's very nice. And then you can also get a shim sometimes because I believe, um, I don't know, Thudbuster, I think they have a longer one. So you can match that 400 millimeter length, but then you might not be able to get 30.9 millimeters. So you can get a little shim adapter and then you really have to crank it down. I realize I'm getting into detail on that, but that's the one thing that I would consider upgrading for myself if I was riding frequently because I have sensitive back and neck. Okay, so I think that's that's about it. The other thing, you know, we were talking about the cable steering and stuff right here, right? And the, the two cables. And I was talking to Charlie about some of the other benefits or like, why would you want that? Why did they design it like that? What were your thoughts, Charlie? What were you? Um, I, they can, you can, instead of having to sort of ship out to Europe or something for, if you break your linkage or something goes wrong with your, you know, usually it's a solid rod. Yeah, a very can, custom like angled. Exactly. Yeah. And if you had, you know, went over something and it got bent all out of shape or broke, then you'd have to wait a few weeks to get it from, from Europe. Here, the cable system, and it is redundant cable. So if you broke one cable, you'd still have another cable. Yeah. Uh, you could go to any bike shop because it's a standard conventional brake cable that you just can get. Just a brake line. Just for a brake line, yep. Okay, yeah, so that's kind of cool. It feels like that's a pretty tough system, resilient, I guess, quicker to fix. Yep, smooth too, smooth yeah. as well. It does feel pretty smooth, and I was talking about ground clearance before. When you have such a long wheelbase, and then the smaller wheels, they lower the, the platform. They keep the center of gravity lower. It's easier to handle and stabilize, but it also means that you can take like rock strikes or whatever. You get high centered, potentially. Can you walk the bike forward and just stow that kickstand real quick for a second? See how it goes up? So, you know, there's there's decent clear it, clearing right there. Like, it's but it's not like quite as high as some of the other ones. Um, so that's just one of the, the trade-offs, I guess, with this design. There's always trade-offs. At this point, oh, and we were also talking about the, the padded seats, how it's like you'd probably want to have, you could potentially fit two kids here, but not for long, depending on their... Depending on their age and how well they get along. Their temperament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you'd probably end up getting, for two kids, you'd end up getting uh, facing seats and in a pinch with the rain you would have them sit side by side but i think they would you know that would probably be a more uh uh realistic scenario <laughs> yeah, yeah. or one kid two uh, kid yeah. before i get into the display i want to talk a little bit about more about the motor so this is rated 250 up to roughly 600 watts it's the bosch performance line cx a little bit heavier than some of the other mid-drive systems because it's actually like an electric mountain bike motor that's was the initial, I think, focus of developing it. But we see it on a lot of cargo bikes because of the weight, because you don't want to get stuck climbing hill and struggling. So this motor, it's slightly heavier. It also has a unique 20 tooth chain ring in here versus something that's slightly bigger. This actually rotates two and a half times for every single crank revolution. So they have a reduction gearing system in there and it just, it allows them to have a smaller ring and maybe empower the motor. It tends to be very quick. There's a little bit more noise produced by this motor because it spins so fast, um, up to 75 newton meters of torque, which is quite a bit, especially when you're going through a drivetrain and not just a single speed. Um, and then I noticed that the chain ring had a narrow wide tooth pattern. So the idea with that is that it fits into these linkages. So narrow in the, the slim link and then wide in the fatter one, and it just really grabs on. So you're not gonna drop the chain. Um, it's not gonna have any slip or kickback. And that's nice. That's something I, I usually only see on uh, mountain bikes as well. So they've really gone overboard on this. The Bosch motor, it measures your rear wheel speed 
usually there's like a little magnet. Oh, there it is. It's back there on the spoke. And then there's a little sensor on the side. It measures rear wheel speed, uh, pedal cadence, and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. It's uh, very responsive. And it's measuring like the pressure of your pedaling to be very smooth and dynamic. It doesn't feel like it's out of control. It feels more, more responsive. And then it's also listening for like kind of shifting signals and that way it eases back a little bit. That's called shift detection. Now that's less of an issue here when you have a continuously variable transmission because it doesn't have cliffs of gears. It's just a smooth, there's like these orbs inside and there's a kind of a tilt thing going on. So it's like higher speed pedaling and then lower speed pedaling. And that's, that's what this little, you know, very smooth shifter is for. And you can shift at standstill, which is nice because there are moments where you get distracted or whatever and you have to stop on a hill and you're like, oh man, you know, I need to be in a lower gear to get started. Even with the motor helping me, I, I, I wanna have like a lower gear. You can do that very easily with the MVLO, but it does add to the price. It also adds to the weight of the bike. Where a traditional derailleur setup would be a you know, couple pounds, I think this is closer to like four or five pounds. So that's part of the price and weight uh, situation. I think, I think that's a, a good overview on the drive system. And now maybe coming back up to the display, talked about how it's removable. I love how big this display is. It's very easy to see even from further back. It's one of my favorite displays to be um, honest with you. And we're getting a little bit of glare here, but you can adjust that. So that's one of the cool features. If you don't lock it down too much, you know, you're back here and it's shining in your eyes. You aim it down a little bit and you're just fine. So we got a power button here. I'm just gonna press that. It boots up pretty quickly, and we've got tons of readouts on this display. Um, there is a little readout on the side of the battery pack too, which is like a five bar infographic showing your charge level. Earlier I talked about taking your display and the battery off the bike, and you might wanna you know, keep this in a cool dry location because extreme heat especially can degrade the cells over time, lithium ion battery cells in there. Uh, and you wanna help that last. It is one of the more expensive parts of the bike. If you know you're not gonna use this, like let's say it's the winter and you just don't feel like riding, make sure it's kind of filled up before you stow it away or at least at half, because if it goes down to zero, that can start to you know, put pressure on the cells again. So those, those are my tips for you guys. Uh, there is a handle built into the top of this. It's very easy to carry. It's not gonna get dropped as easily. And even on the bike, if you crash the bike for some reason, or you know, you, it's just not as kickable right here. It feels very well protected and then good weight distribution. So those same five LEDs that I talked about on the side of the battery, they're sort of replicated up here on that infographic. Looks like a battery. Each battery bar is like 20%. It does leave something to be desired. I kind of wish there were like 10 bars or an actual percentage readout with 1% increments, but that's just not the case here. Instead, we have something called range. So see how it says range and there's two dashes here? That's because we don't have any assist right now. We're in off mode. So basically this is a traditional pedal power bike, but with lights and like a really nice, you know, display computer telling you how fast you're going and stuff. As soon as I click the plus button or, you know, and if we were up, I would hit minus, but the plus button is going to take to the lower level of assist, it's called Eco, it dynamically says, well, we estimate you can go 75 miles. So the battery is pretty full here. It's calculating the last mile of actual riding, including the weight of the bike and all this stuff. It's dynamically generating a 75 mile estimate. That's, inc that's impressive to me, That's it's especially for one battery. Um, but if we arrow up and we get a little bit more support, maybe we get up there to turbo, see it drops way down to 24. So, you know, my estimate, it's kind of like the 24 to 70 miles. It really depends. The tire pressure makes a difference, the wind, the terrain you're riding on, the cargo that you've got in that bucket. And then everything in between is a little bit different. So tour, a lot of times I'll ride in tour and sport just to kind of be somewhat efficient. There's a little power infographic on the side that shows you how hard the motor's working. Down here, we've got the range readout, but as soon as we click this I button, which is also duplicated right there, it's gonna cycle through some of the other menus. So go and see the odometer, got trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and then back to range. You can hold, I think reset and I, and it'll get you into the uh, settings and you can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I've done a separate video for this back in the electric bike review forums where I just focus on this display and actually go into the settings. You can check that out and maybe ask for some help if you need it. Uh, people will chime in. There's a dedicated light button, which we, we used earlier to turn the lights on and off. And I think that's just kind of cool. I just feel like this display is, it's very intuitive. And that's, I think they called it the, in, the Intuvia for a reason. Um, I like that it's removable. It kind of seems like it, Charlie. Should we go for a ride? Yep. Okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm gonna take it up to turbo mode because that's 
that's my favorite for testing. Um, just push the bike forward a little bit, right? And then it comes up. You can pedal backwards pretty easily and get, get ready to pedal. I'm gonna take this into, I think we're right there, we're in a low gear, so it's gonna be very easy to start. And here we go. Hear a little bit of vibration going on there with that front cargo box. It's, nothing's really strapped down. But I think otherwise those fenders would be pretty quiet and the rest of the bike feels pretty, pretty locked in, pretty tight. Oh boy. See how quickly it starts and stops? Like that's, that's what I'm talking about. And now that we're on pavement, it's a lot smoother, a lot quieter. There's even like a little shift recommendation. Do you see that arrow top left part of the screen there pointing up? That was the, the computer's pretty smart. It's saying, hey, you're gonna get better range. It's gonna be more efficient for you and the motor if you shift gears up. Cause remember I'm in like a really low gear for climbing right now. So what it wants me to do is kind of turn this, oh, I guess the other direction and go to a lower gear. So there's a lot of great feedback with this system. Okay, you guys, from here, you can't really see it, but that's where the chain is. It's got that nice plastic cover and then the 20 tooth chain ring narrow wide. I love that they did that. That's a, that's a pretty nice upgrade. Like the brakes, like the pedals. They've, they've done some good stuff here. Um, I, you know, and in terms of shifting, you can shift at standstill, but I would definitely ease off when you're shifting under a load, especially if you're going to a higher gear, because you're going to be fighting against the power of the motor and forcing that cable and trying to shift the gear in the back. It's always a good idea to ease off a little bit. And as I mentioned, the Bosch system does have software driven shift detection, but it, it doesn't really work the same with internally geared hubs or continuously variable transmissions. I feel like they're pretty tough and everything, but you're, you're going to be, you're going to be fighting and straining your hand and then kind of tearing up the actual grip itself if you're fighting it too much so just ease off a little bit um, and remember this is very sensitive so if you're not applying as much torque the motor is going to respond very naturally to that also because this is the Bosch performance line CX the sport level which is the third level up it's like eco tour sport turbo um, the sport level it's actually kind of like I guess you can do a software update where it becomes EMTB and then it relies even more on torque and it gives you a wider power band because on electric mountain bikes, they didn't want you to have to be able to, you know, screw around with changing assist level. So they made EMTB mode, which is like a kind of capture everything mode. On this unit that I'm testing here, it's called sport still. So they haven't done the software change. And uh, I think it's an option. You can you can ask for sport or EMTB. Get a little technical here, but I thought I'd, hi I'd highlight that. And then the chain tensioner has been pretty good. I haven't heard the chain bouncing around. I'm gonna pedal through, hit some of those higher RPMs, uh, go off road a little bit and just give you guys uh, a nice view. got up to 22 miles per hour there but the motor cuts out at 20 because this is a class one electric bike so it's possible to go a little bit faster but i want to call out that because there's this reduction gear system there's a little bit of drag that happens with the bosch performance line motors in particular if you don't have the motor turned on or if you exceed the top assisted level not a lot but it's you know again this spins two and a half revolutions for every single crank revolution and that's the reduction gear so overall working very great just as I'd expect from like a Bosch system. Two year comprehensive warranty on this. And because they're using the Power Pack, it's actually interchangeable with the older Power Pack 400. And it's a really nice pack design. It's so light compared to the new Power Tube. And if you've got some, maybe you're traveling or you know, you're trying to go further and you wanna borrow a battery, that's just such a universal pack that I've seen in so many other e-bikes. It's actually one of my favorites. So it's another highlight. Just need to go? Yeah, we just ride around for a minute and try to keep an eye on traffic. 
the steering. It can take a minute to get used to that. Once you get a little bit of speed, the bike feels very stable. <laughs> it actually handles pretty well. Feeling pretty good? Yeah. Oh, look at the flowers. Loving that. It's just, you know, it's pretty impressive. I think, what did they say? Like 200 pounds from the front? 220 pounds in the front. So I'm under the weight limit and we probably want to circle back so Charlie's bike doesn't get lifted, but you know, it's possible. He's doing just fine. And maybe stabilize the bike here. You feeling good? Yeah. Look at that. See, he can put his feet down right now. Feeling very comfortable. I'm going to go ahead and hop out real quick. And then again, just thank you so much for your time, Charlie. Thank you, Court. It's been a lot of fun. You guys, that's the Yuba Super Marche, 6,000 bucks. Probably closer to seven when you taxes and all the other accessories and stuff, but there are so many cool accessories to be had. I've measured the length, width, height, everything. Minimum saddle, height, uh, all those details back at electricbikereview.com. I love you guys. I'll do my best, but I'm going to try to answer questions that come up, and I welcome your corrections if I got something wrong or you want to expand upon this. Have fun out there. Ride safe. I'll see you next time. Cheers.